Hey everybody, our fearless here. Welcome back to our Pokemon Sword and Shield. Last time, we started adventure through the Galar region, getting ourselves our first Pokemon in Flahair. And this time, we are going to continue our exploration throughout the flo across the uh, region. So, starting things out, we could head this way and get roadblocked somewhere. Did we get roadblocked? Are you going to roadblock me? Nope, we have to go back. So yeah, welcome back to Broken Bridges the game. Last time we encountered a bunch of broken bridges, and this time, more broken bridges. And here we're going to be complaining about how modern Pokemon is bad. And not the ways everyone can consider, because who cares about the trees? I just want to go out and do my own thing. Well now, isn't Squirt Bunny just a sweetheart? And yes, I heard the news from young Leon. I'm glad someone bothered to tell me. Off to Woodshirts, aren't you? Here you are, a bit of pocket money for your journey. Buy yourself a little something at the Pokemon Center. Maybe some potions or something. Remember that Squirt Bunny will battle to the very end for you. So don't go pushing the poor deer too hard. And you, Squirt Bunny. Look after my little Orph. Come on home to rest anytime you need. After all, east or west, home is best. And now for a little something extra. Looks like little sweetheart might be running a little empty. Let's have it rest up. As long as Pokemon are at your side, your energy carry forward, you'll naturally find you have a smile on your face. Alright then, so, with that all done, now you're free to head on out to the next town. So, you're, so you could go back to the world, but it's kind of locked off right now. Oh well. You gotta railroad you somehow. And oh boy, this is only the start of it. But yeah, despite all this railroading thing, I still like this game. It's no, it's no uh, Black 2, but it's still a decent enough game. There we go, this is quite the big step, you know. My first step towards becoming the next champion. This will probably train up Grookey a bit by having a battle against a Pokemon in the tall grass. You, you should get yourself to the building with the purple roof and the red hat and white ball. Marked it out in front. That's the Pokemon Research Lab. Alright, I'm gonna go and take the main path, except not because Wooloo are in the way. You wanna make you won't want to wake up the sleeping the sweet sleeping Wooloo, right? Better take the long way around. Y'all are in my path! Let me throw! Oh boy, it's Puke and Muku all over again. So yeah, so going on through the grass here, the Pokemon are going to be out and about. And we can whistle them to call them forward to you. So yeah, this is this is the thing I do like about newer Pokemon games. Yeah, sure. It takes out a lot of the random encounters, but you're free to go through it. You're free to encounter Pokemon as you see fit, so if you... Don't want to grind around for a few hours looking for Pokemon, you're good to do so. And if you want to do the random aspect, there are random po random encounters you can do. Hello there, Blipbug. So yeah, I'll be going over these bios later on this episode. So yeah, I'm just going to be mostly avoiding these wild battles when we can. Yeah, done goes my special attack. This is why I didn't really use Ember, because... Well, here, special attack isn't that great, and the bugs are pretty defensive. Oh well. Trying to get more experience. Yeah, seven experience is kind of puny. Mostly because I didn't quite mention it last episode, but one thing about the, about uh, newer Pokemon games, I guess, Gen 5, 7, and 8, is that it has a dynamic experience curve, where the more overleveled you have, the less, the less experience that your Pokemon will get. Also, Pokemon, they're willing to run away from you. Because they know better. Anyways, here we get a Paralyzed Heal. Heroes Paralysis. Something we'll get to later on. So yeah, so Pokemon behave differently. If, like, for example, these Squawvet, they're afraid of us so they're running away. Random Encounter Pokemon. They don't like you. Oh, it's a Nickit. Oh boy, Nickit. We'll get to that later on. So here we are back in Wedgers. And Charizard here. The Ultimate Charizard. Fan service. The Pokemon. So yes, you're free to explore the tent as you see fit. We can go on into the station. What's our broken bridge this time? So yeah, so we can go here and get ourselves a Pokemon, but we can't really buy anything. Talking to you, I'm sorry, but... But please speak to me again once you're able to access the wild area. What, you mean the train's offline? Yes, yeah, the train is delayed due to a railroad rail car inspection. So yeah, so anyways, this guy here is for DLC. We'll get to that later on. Because yes, we'll be going for DLC. This is a 100% playthrough. Try going up this way, and... Where's our broken bridge? 
Here we have a person blocking the Pokemon. My Wulu simply loves the Pokemon Center. Come on, Wulu, you're perfectly healed. Time to go back home. Meh, broken bridge. Hee <laughs> hee. My month's birthday horoscope is spot on. Hmm, you want to tell me your fortune too? In that case, you'll have to tell me the month you were born. Well, this is actually how you're able to answer your birthday because in previous Pokemon games, it rates your birthday depending on your system. However, though, this is not quite the same system. Since 3DS and DS, it's tied to your uh, birthday. However, though, it's 3DS is more personalized for one person. Meanwhile, Switch is kind of built for like families too. So, well, I could go for my actual birthday. Um. Trying to think, uh. You know what, let's do my uh, channel's anniversary. May 10th, my first started Let's Playing. Fortune is, let's see here. Hmm? What's it saying here? It must be for my snack. The page is smudged in, I really can't read it. <clears throat> but people with your birthday are going to be super duper lucky. Oh, I wish. Tell that to, to a Pokemon Black to me. You may even run into a legendary Pokemon, or maybe not. So anyway, see you later. Yeah, that's how you're able to insert your birthday into the game. It's a little bit obscure, but yeah. Continuing on through town. Where's a broken bridge? Is it here? Oh, yes. Hello there, NBC. A lot of the trainers training out there, t training their teams on Route 2. I just can't believe it. Give me a moment to process, would you? I'm still in shock here. And get turned around. It's almost as if I know where all the broken bridges are. Anyways, here is a revive. Revives the Pokemon from faint back to life. Or I guess back to not faint. Because it can't be dead, it has to be faint. Gotta keep things PG. And here I am for casting the town too. The inside here, Sonya and Leon used to have a healthy rivalry, but... Eh. Leon loves Pokemon and loves Pokemon battles. I remember he would always go on, even in practice matches. NPCs... I won't focus too much on them. Sometimes they have some stuff, but most of the time they're just talking about things, and world building isn't quite as it used to be. So anyways, we could do, do story stuff, but we get ourselves a batik here, and a Poke doll. Poke dolls are very useful in the game. I kind of forgot this boutique exists. Welcome to our boutique. What can I help you find? So here you're able to change your outfit depending on what you want. It costs a little bit of money for some of these, but... Trainer customization. Casualty. And Urban Smog too. So yes, yeah, so you're able to change your person. You're able to change your character's outfit. Casualty costs a lot. Um, but you know what? Urban Smog because it has Pokemon. I really like for some stupid reason. So yes, yeah, so we're able to change as we see fit. Able to put on new hoodies. Put on new pants. Or I guess new trousers. Got to keep up with the lingo. Okay, and put that on. Alright, putting on socks, don't really care. Go ahead and put on new shoes. Every boutique has different things depending on the style you want. I don't really care for the loafers, and you're able to change your backpack depending on how you like it. I personally like my luggage rack, but yeah. And different caps too, so you can actually have your cap off if you so choose. Caps, they aren't really fully there. You have your knit cap and all that fun stuff. Um, you can have glasses too, which some of these default ones aren't really that greatest, but I do like how you're able to put on glasses too. I'll go ahead and put that on. And you're able to wear gloves too if you so seek to, but I don't really like those gloves. Yeah, so now we're walking around in our new fashion outfit. And you're free to change as you see fit. And one thing that you can do is that you can go ahead and remove jackets if you want. Um, you can't really remove your pants or, or your shoes or your socks or that, but you can remove your hat if you want. I personally like the uh, vanilla cap, but you can take it off if you want. There's a little bit of more t more ex exposition things. Infinite customization. I'd rather have infinite customizations than having uh, 1080, I guess, uh, 4K trees. So come on forward to the Pokemon Lab since, well, nowhere else we can really go right now. Well done, we've reached the goal and managed to find the Pokemon Research Lab. I may or may not have done a lot of detouring. You did a f f far sight see beyond than I did my first time. I'm hopeless with directions. Let's see how your world has grown. All thanks to having Pokemon with you. I'm sure... Sorry, I'm... I know I'm sure you're glad I have got Charizard with me to keep me from getting lost all the time. Now, in we go.
I've got to give it to Professor Magnolia. Everything here looks fascinating. What is it today, Leon? Look in for info on another never-before-seen super-strong Pokémon. I wish you'd stop me with these outlandish requests. Good to see you too, Yamper. Yamper is a real champ when it comes to helping you find your way around. You came to my rescue plenty of times back in the day, when I got lost on the road. Oh yeah, and that's his trainer, Sonia. What, what can I say about Sonia? Well, I like the way she cooks. She makes food you can gobble down in a flash. <laughs> what kind of introduction is that? Did you forget we were rivals during our gym challenge? It wasn't just Yamper helping you out. I did too. Anyway, it's nice to meet you. Name's Sonia. I'm the professor's assistant. This is Orv. He's a new Pokemon trainer. Set, set him on the right path, would you? What does he think I am? He's always got his head in the clouds. It's no wonder he gets lost all the time. Oh, looks like you got a, a Rotom phone. Hey there, Rotom. Bzzzert. Rotom phones are the handy, are handy little things, aren't they? They've got a map and navigation tool. That said, Leon still gets lost, so... Oh, sorry. So tell me, do you know a lot about Pokemon? Uh, you bet. Well said. In that case, I'll make it so you can use the Pokédex on your Rotom phone. Please don't turn it into Rotom Dex! Please don't turn it into Rotom Dex! I'm not ready for Rotom Dex again. Please. That's the reason why I hate Ultra Sun. Just so you know, that Rotom Dex is a gift from my Gran. Would you let Gran know that you received the Pokédex? She lives in the house along Route 2. Alright, and we're free to go down Route 2. Hey there, trainer. Sorry to stop you. You just left the Pokemon lab, right? That means you got a Pokedex, yeah? I love talking to you, trainers, and giving them useful stuff. Thanks for the potion. It's a po potion. Using your Pokemon's HP, their hit points gets low. HP is like a Pokemon's stamina. You, you can even use potions here in battle. Knowledge is power. It's a good idea to talk to lots of different people and read everything you can on your journey. And, by journey I mean going the other way, going around the spin, and getting yourself a rare candy. Rare candy. It increases your Pokemon's level by one. Oh boy, candy are just... Candy's broken in this game. Like, if you know what you're doing, candy will break everything. Well, we could head along Route 2. However, though, since we have ourselves our Pokedex... Let's go on ahead and talk to Mum real quick, because this is actually, well besides we can now take this path properly, with the Pokédex, this actually is a cutscene skip. Hooray for, use, for useless speedrunning knowledge, but if you backtrack to your, to your Mum, you are able to, well, get yourself a little bit of a cutscene skip, so heading on forward, well, the forest is still blocked, so all we can do is head on in. Hey mom, I got myself a Pokedex. Looks your sweet score bunny made running a little bit of empty. Okay, it's next cutscene. Alright, I made a side I made an extra trip. Anyways, before we do what we want to do, we can talk to Hop here. Got your Pokedex from Sonia. It's time to meet lots of different Pokemon and start building up a strong team. But battling strong Pokemon in the world can leave their team in a bad way. Not to mention what battling other trainers can do. Luckily we've got Pokemon Centers. Luckier yet, they're dead easy to spot. They look the same everywhere you go. Come on, Orph. Bet you've never seen the inside of one. I mean, they vary from region to region. Love with me, Orph. Is this your first time Pokemon Center? Of course not. Then I don't... I don't think you need to tell me what you already know. If you two kids are Pokemon trainers, you might want to buy some potions before you head out. Yes, I'm already good though. I'm heading on a route to Orph. Come find me, maybe when you're done here. 
I don't need you to explain things. I can explain things on my own. So here we have ourselves Nurse Joy with the uh, healing. So if you ever need to heal, talk to Nurse Joy and get that. But we have ourselves the Pokemart here. And once you're able to buy some things. So we can buy Revise as we see fit. We have ourselves some heals which heal status ailment. We've got Antidotes which cure poison which decreases your HP every turn by about 16th or 8th. I think it's 8th. Burn heal, it's 1 16th per turn and decreases, decreases your attack. Ice heal heals you when you're frozen. Frozen's when you're, well, frozen. <laughs> It's actually a very rare status. Awakening wakes you up from sleep. And Paralyze cures you from paralysis. Paralysis makes you go really slow. Yeah, there's a couple others, but those are very niche. There's a better way you can get those, though. And now for the main caveat. Here we get ourselves some Pokédex questions, so you can rate a nickname. So if you ever want to change your nickname, you can go ahead and talk to him. And it will be able to change your Pokémon's nickname. Another thing you can do, remember a move. So yeah, so, if your Pokemon forgets any move, you can teach it back. We'll get into that later, and you can also forget a move, don't worry about forgetting a move. We're just saying, if you know what you're doing, you can destroy this game completely with, with the move reminder. It's not like it was in X and Y. X and Y, sorry, Sword and Shield, it was terrible because they stuck it in the last Pokemon Center. Listen, I've been thinking, if you're a Pokemon trainer, now, you might want to try your hand at the gym challenge, right? What's that? The gym challenge, mate. The, the annual competition where trainers can battle it out for the right to challenge the champion. But the trick is that you've got to be indoors if you want to take part. And Lee doesn't seem to think I'm up to snuff. So I'm thinking I ought to tell the professor and see if she can help. You've got to take part too. The proper rival is just the thing every trainer needs to keep growing stronger after all. Keeps you motivated, right? The professor's house is way down at the end of Route 2. So head there and give our teams a chance to train up a little bit along the way. We could, but we're actually going to head on back. The reason why is because I think the Pokemon Center is the cutscene trigger. It's one of those. And we want to backtrack to our mom's house because we are able to actually skip an upcoming cutscene if we go back and talk to mom. It's a little bit time saving. I think it saves maybe like a second or two, but it's better than reviewing a tutorial because... Yeah, people complain that tutorials are unskippable. Well, they address it a little bit because some of the uh, tutorials you expect in regular Pokemon games, you can skip now in Sword and Shield. And heading on back further, still not open. Oh, I must have got Pokeballs sometime when I talked to Mom. Yeah, when you talk to Mom sometime, I don't remember where. Generally, after you get the Pokedex, you're able to talk to Mom and you're able to get yourself Pokeballs. So with Pokeballs, you can use them to catch Pokemon. And now this is where things get a little bit complicated because... Just as a preface... I'll be skipping Bios. Well, here's the thing. I'll be saving Bios for their own section, which landing the Bios to Pokemon. So if you don't want to deal with any of the Bios for Pokemon, you are free to, well, skip ahead to when they're done. Since I'll be saving the Bios for their own individual sections unless they're only like one Pokemon in a route. Because these get long-winded and these routes are very short. So one thing before is that Pokemon in Route 1, during the early game, they have a 100% catch rate. At least I'm 99% sure, at least that, that's how it was in Gen uh, 7, was that the first section when you're able to catch Pokemon, they have a 100% catch rate. I think the same is true here, I'm not for sure. I'm catching Caterpie now because, why not? And we're able to register in the Pokédex. For protection, it releases a horrible scent from the antenna on its head to drive away enemies. Not going to give it a nickname. And it'll add to your party. If you want to, well, take Pokémon out, you're free to go ahead and head back to the Pokémon Center, so... Oh well, hope you like my voice. So starting things up here on Route 1 is Squavet. You cannot have a region without a rodent, and the first up is Squavet. Squavet is your run-of-the-mill rodent, but unlike other rodents that are fast, Squavet is slow. Like one of the slowest Pokemon, slow. Low specials and speed offset by good HP and, de and physical stats. He falls a little late for rodent standards into Greedent. Somehow becomes even slower, but becomes more bulky with buffs to its special defense and better physical stats. It serves as a decent physical tank. Like other normal types, it can learn a diverse move pool such as Body Slam, Counter, Elemental Fangs, and some good TRs that are decent. However, though, there are better tanks that serve the job well, plus no return in this game to make it a strong buff, but... Overall, it's a decent Pokémon. Not fantastic, it's slow, 
it does have Gyro Ball though. It's decent, but much like other rodents, it's not really meant for long term. Next up is Rookity. Every root one also requires a bug, a rodent, and a bird. And the bird this time is Rookity. It's a pretty good bird type poke I guess flying type Pokemon, but the main downfall is it evolves rather late. Standard bird fair with fast and decent special, I guess decent attack, no defenses, same as through here. After tolling to level 18, you get yourselves Corvus Squad, which is an upgrade to be sure in all its stats. Semi fast, decent defenses, and attack. However, though, at level 38, it becomes uh, Corviknight, which is generally late because 35 is your starters, and Corviknight is an interesting Pokemon. It's a uh, knockoff Skarmory. It has good defense stats and attack, and much slower than previous evolutions. Its type alone makes it pretty good because Steel type is a very good defensive typing. And its hidden ability is actually pretty good if you're willing to go for that. It has decent attack, not the greatest, but still alright. Some of its good moves include Steel Wing and Drill Pack, otherwise not really much moves you would be able to learn from birds. Just your general bird fare. Um, you have U-Turn, Revenge, and a few good TRs note. It serves as a tank, bulky in nature, and requires a lot of effort to go into it, but still a pretty good payout. And I would say it's about the same as Skarmory overall. Pretty, def pretty defensive. As for its hidden ability, it's really good. Mirror Armor reflects status lowering moves and effects. Intimidate, which would normally lower the opponent's attack, now lowers the uh, user's attack if it were to be uh, reflected away. So yeah, so no speed debuffs, none of that fun stuff, so it's actually really good if you're willing to grind it out. Hidden abilities though, they're hard to come by. Next up is Wooloo. Wooloo is pretty decent normal type Pokemon. It's a physical based Pokemon with high defense and amount of stats. At the same level you get Greedent, you get Double. Less HP than Greedent, but much faster, higher defense and special defense. It's a nice bulky Pokemon, it's built fluffy makes it even more resilient, with the caveat of it becoming weak, weak to fire. But oh well, it's a pretty good tank. Main trade off though is that it doesn't have a great move pool. Pretty cool normal moves, reversal, cotton guard for super defense, and bounce for TM and a decent amount of TRs too. It's generally a decent normal type of Pokemon. Its move pool is pretty lacking though, which is kind of eh, but all around pretty alright. Next up is Nicket, the last overworld Pokemon on Route 1. Nicket is bad! It evolves at a low level, level 18. It's fast and has decent special stats, but it's super frail on the physical side. Which is pretty much all our early game. All physical type Pokemon, so it won't be able to do much. Thiefel is also fast and has decent special defense, but its physicals are still lackluster. It has access to a good amount of TMs that are physical based and a bad attack stat, leaves it pretty much lacking for any desirability. This level of move pool has good target moves that are physical, like and the only Snarl is the only special moves that takes care of its special stat, and that is still rubbish. You have to go farm TRs later on for Psychic and Dark Pulse if you want to make it even remotely decent. But in those wild areas, you can find much better Pokemon. While I think Nicket is cute, you're best to avoid this Pokemon. As for tall grass Pokemon, the first up is Blipbug, the regional bug type. Blipbug is different compared to other bug type Pokemon. It evolves into a first, a fir, evolves at level 10 into Dotler. The only move it learns during that time is Struggle Bug, a pretty weak move. But once it gets into Dotler, it gets the ball rolling a little bit with its shields and confusion. But in the meantime, it gets some TMs at the same time. Decent for early raiding, I guess. The lane, is, the lane will define itself being very defensive base. Well, it's true for Orbeetle. Orbeetle is pretty decent. It's fast, decent special attacks, but the main draw is its defense stats. HP is pretty mad, but it's pretty bulky and holds its own a bit in battle thanks to learning some moves like Psychic, Bug Buzz, and a few good TRs. It's a pretty good Pokemon, it is a defensive Pokemon in nature, good for raids to hold on its own. Main thing though is that it's level 30 which is quite a long way, especially for early bug standards. So yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a struggle bug to get there. Next up is Caterpie. Where is Weedle? According to Caterpie, it doesn't exist. As a Pokemon, it, it's a generic early game bug Pokemon that its final evolution evolves at level 10. Very low level to all things considered. It has n decent defenses. Hardly any specials. It's a very weak bug type Pokemon, but it evolves to level 7 into Metapod. That's very hard. Super hard, loves hardening. All it can really do. So yeah, but it evolves into Butterfree at level 10. The main thing about the Butterfree that makes it shine is its use of Compound Eyes, which buffs accuracy by 30%. And it can learn a lot of power type moves that naturally have 75% accuracy. Sleep Powder is pretty strong, which will help out a lot. Offensively, it can learn a few good moves in the early levels like Bug Buzz and Air Slash. 
Late game quiver dance is available, which lets it up, which will let it set up sl sleeping. Use quiver dance to go for sleeping, and yeah, it's actually pretty good. Fly, I guess, is also if it can learn, I guess, uh, wrong Pokemon. It's generally pretty all right. Nothing super special in terms of stats, but its uh, abilities and uh, moves make it pretty good. Next up is Alola's Bug Pokemon, Grubbin. Grubbin is a physical-based Pokemon, and Vikavolt becomes in special, uh, becomes special based. The line is bulky but slow, meaning you'll have to, you'll have to take a hit before it can do a uh, considerable amount of damage. One unique thing in this region is that Pokemon that, previ that were previously locked behind a region location that to evolve are now stone-based, meaning that you can get yourself a uh, Vika Volt with a Thunderstone instead of having to go to some end-game location for some stupid reason. Cough, cough, Gen 7. It's still a pretty strong Pokemon. 145 Special Attack is nothing to sneeze at, with defense with a decent defense stat too. Its special defense is pretty good. Move full wise, Thunderbolt Discharge, Bug Buzz, Fly, I guess, and a few other TRs are pretty good. The class change from physical to special will be a little bit rough to transition, but it is a very strong Pokemon. Lastly, we have Hootoot. Hootoot is another regional bird. It is a map flying type Pokemon, very mediocre, and he falls a little bit faster than other bird Pokemon. As Pokemon is a special based Pokemon with low defense, and eh, decent special and Attack and defense. Similar to Thievul, but the difference though is that Noctowl can learn many decent special type moves such as Moonblast, Ear Slash, Extra Sensory, among some other defensive learning moves such as Reflect and such. It holds itself out a little bit better. Main downside though is that it doesn't have much for defense. It's a decent Pokemon, better than Neckit. Overall though, I'd still say Rookity is better. Alright, I need to get a drink. Alright, that all done, I guess we could, we could go around the grass a little bit because I do want to do a little bit of hunting just because. Since we're guaranteed free um, captures, pretty much. Here is a blip bug. I'm just curious. To, I'm just curious to see what Pokemon we can find here because quite a few good Pokemon exist here. You're free to run if you don't want to encounter the Pokemon. And also, one thing to note, though, that's going on forward, is that when you catch a Pokemon, you might have noticed earlier. Cute little squall vet. Is that when you capture a Pokemon, you, you still get experience from that. You're free to get as much experience as you see fit in order to go about things a little bit easier. Let me go ahead and catch you. I kind of go for a uh, Grubbin because Grubbin is really good. Yeah, I was really keen on trying to see if I can get back to the Slumbering World because Grubbin is a lot more co common there, but... Eh, not the end of the world. I'm actually curious how rare Grubbin is here in the tall grass. Okay, it's 10% encounter. Not as bad as I was fearing. I was expecting it to be like a 1%. Yeah, so Grubbin isn't too rare. The reason why I want to catch one is... Here's the thing, I was actually thinking about having many Pokemon in rotation. I do have a final team set up, but... There are some backups I do want to do, and plus I want to showcase some other differences in the game. And do it as a Pokemon I do like in general. Because really, this game is... This Let's Play is kind of like... A wish list of Pokemon I've always wanted to use but couldn't really because of circumstances. Like Gen 6 I can't do because 3DS capture cards are like $2,000. Same with Gen 7, no one really makes them anymore. Grubbin's a Pokemon I really like. I'll just have this in the back burner. It's not going to be a Pokemon I'll be using for the main team. Think of it more like a uh, B team. So yes, we are able to get ourselves quite a bit of experience from that because Grubbin is level 5. And can be level 3 I guess. Alright, its natural enemies like Rookity may flee rather than risk getting caught in its large mandibles that can snap tree branches, that can snap thick tree branches. So, one thing I've been considering, I will be catching them all. There's always that one caveat. I will be catching them all. In fact, just so you all know, I've actually caught them all before in a uh, stream project about a year ago. It took about 24 hours to do. I'll be kind of doing it, but I'll be doing most of the catching off screen. And that's where the B team comes in. The B team is my catching team, so that way my main team that's going through the game won't become superly overleveled. And here's Hutu too, because Hutu is superly rare. Yeah, Hutu is a Pokemon I really don't like. I mean, I've used one before, but it's generally mediocre. 
And if you're only one of you that's catching really nilly, these folk would have like 100% catch rate for Route 1. Hooray! Mediocre Pokemon! I'll be doing some more stuff later on too, so I'm not too concerned. No, thank you. I don't need to uh, give you a nickname. And Wooloo, I guess. This was the last Pokemon I wanted to catch here. What can I say? Every single game I go for some stupid ass challenge. X sorry, uh Pokemon 2 uh Xenoblade 2. 100 percent That's insanity on its own. And that's before going on into the uh 100 percent speedruns I've done. Yeah, I kinda found my niche. Doing stupid challenges. Yeah, this would be kind of more of a casual let's play. I'll be doing most of the Pokemon catching off screen. So yeah, so that's the B team. The team that will catch Pokemon without overloving my main team. Alright then, since I haven't done any damage or taken anything, we're going to head on to the next route here. And, well... Just trying to think, you know what? I think this is going to be a good place to, well... Actually, before you conclude things off, here's the cutscene that we actually skip. Heading on to Route 2. Over here, Orph. Alright, Orph, it's time we filled in our teams a bit. And I'm here to teach you how. You'll need to catch Pokemon if you've got any hopes of filling it in that Pokedex. Wait, where did you come from? Oh, look at you, little Orph. You've already caught some of your own. Your mom gave you those Pokeballs, did she? I'll give you some more Pokeballs. In return, only ask you to catch plenty of Pokemon. The Pokemon around here seem to be easy to catch, almost like they're itching to join some trainer's team, wouldn't you say? And we get ourselves a free refill of Pokemon. It gets Pokeballs. The Pokemon on your team will get experience when you catch Pokemon too. And of course, they get experience points from battles, so take on other trainers you meet along the path to help your Pokemon thrive. Your team will keep changing and growing as you grow stronger together, no doubt. But even I don't know exactly how yet. Show your champion something good, alright? Alright, I gotta catch loads of Pokemon. The professor will be shocked when she sees. I've already got a few Pokemon. So yeah, so if you did not get the Pokeballs from Mom, you there will be a cutscene here that will showcase how to catch Pokemon. Thank God. Because I'm tired of learning how to catch Pokemon when it's like a very slow cutscene. When I already know how to catch these Pokemon, I've been catching them for 20 years now, okay? But enough bickering aside. I think we made good progress this episode. Yes, it's going to be going a little bit slow. I'll be taking this Let's Play slow and steady. Since I gotta let something last for a long time as I'm doing my work. Well, next time in Pokemon Sword and Shield, we'll be exploring Route 2 and heading on to the Pokemon Lab. I will see you all then. <laughs>